Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about refactors re and really bad spaghetti code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story. Hi Frederick, I've got a burning question for you. How do I deal with really bad spaghetti code and to some extent imposter syndrome? For some background, I've been a newly employed junior and the first employee at a lovely little startup since October. I've been very much enjoying the work, been really getting into it lately, the lingering imposter syndrome and lack of focus aside. Recently, however, we've started working on outside projects that was an outside product that was massively cobbled together by a kid without any prior coding skill nor a lot of aptitude for coding over the past year or so. And it's all spaghetti filled with bad practices, nested components, wacky imports, naming schemes and classes. It's terribly hard to work with and it would, I would like to refactor it all. However, the customer currently won't pay for that as they want specific fixes only. I'm trying to, among other things, implement TypeScript, but that's so, but there are so many strict, many in, intricately interwoven bits of logic, hard-coded variables and outdated syntax that I get stuck on all ends, uh, leading me to fumble around looking for solutions after solution and wasting hours without getting much of any real progress done, resulting in me overshooting the planned time frame for most tickets and even not making any progress on an issue for an entire day or two before finally ask him, asking him to take care of it. That frightens me, I worry about not meeting expectations, not improving and or, and or generally not being good enough despite my employer's consistently encouraging words. I like this position, I, I enjoy the work a lot, especially when it's uh, right outside my comfort zone and looking back I've made some pretty great progress in just four months. However, I don't want to disappoint my employer or to contribute to the company and contribute to the company, let alone give him reason to fire me. Is there any advice that you can give me? <laughs> well, uh, first and foremost, uh, realize that uh, imposter syndrome is its like a given for most of you, like for most junior developers, guys, a uh, imposter syndrome is a given. It's uh, well, it's gonna be there. It's just fear and nerves and inexperience, guys, and all of that goes away over time. I promise you it will. It stands in direct proportion to one, how much exposure do you have to the environment that you find yourself in, and two, how good are you at your job. It really comes down to that. When you get to a master level, you will be able to stare down an entire room of people who think that you're an idiot or a hack and just look at them and say no actually that's not how it works uh, I know that for a fact because I of course had imposter syndrome once upon a time as well and practically every single software developer that I've ever worked with has had it I work with uh, such a person now who is scared shitless of everything and from opening his mouth and saying the wrong thing to making me uh, upset in a code review and I've had worse than him I've had people who are so sh scared shitless of making a mistake that if I put a comment on their code in the code review I had to have a specific like a private session with that individual because he was freaking out over the fact that now there's a record that he made a mistake in the code and he like he, he literally wanted me to not put comments on his code in the code review because somebody else could see that he has made a mistake and uh, guys you have to realize that if you are to survive as a software developer this is going to be part of it there's no way around it you have to put yourself out there because at the end of the day being a software developer is similar in in a sense to being a writer or like a journalist or something like that you are creating something in this case it's code and that code can be good or bad 
depending on who looks at it and it can work and it cannot work etc it's up for judgment and anything that is sort of creative or sort of requires skills that is up for review or up for judgment that is not just your own little thing is subject to all these things like you you are emotionally doing the same thing as anybody who's ever put something out there into the world and asked somebody to look over it and say yes or no and it's really just that it's just nerves and so I like to tell people that you just have to realize that it is as I said it's nerves in experience and nothing else it it will pass with time and it usually passes faster if you do the one thing that kills all fear and that is to expose yourself to the thing that is making you afraid and practice 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 I like to tell people that nothing is more effective uh, when it comes to dealing with something that is a little bit unknown or scary than just doing things that are increasingly more difficult to I mean if you can't do the thing do the next thing that is closest to it that feels comfortable do that until you're no longer afraid of that thing and then move on until you're not afraid of that thing anymore I'd like to also mention to people that do you remember once upon a time that you were probably pretty scared to sit on the toilet by yourself you needed toilet training do you are you still afraid to sit on the toilet probably not and it's the same deal here if you want to get to a point where it's like breathing to you to set like to to work as a software developer it really comes down to that you have to just you just have to practice it over and over and over and just understand that fear is just an emotion it's all it is it's not gonna hurt you you're afraid yes but at the end of the day that doesn't matter if you just keep on doing it it's gonna go away and even if you the only thing that can cause a problem is if you let that fear get in your way of doing the thing that you want to be doing as they say the difference between a brave person and a, f and a coward is that the brave person feels the same fear as the coward, but does the job anyway. That's a very good saying. As for this, the problem you have with legacy code, uh, you have to understand how to talk to your stakeholder. This is a very, it's a normal, very rookie mistake that people make. Uh, it's a for me, it's a beginner or mid-level like. Uh, mistake that software developers do and that is that they tell their, their, uh, they tell their stakeholders everything now what I mean by that isn't that you should lie to your stakeholder but what you should understand is what your stakeholder hears when you say refactor so an example you said to me that you won't refactor at all and I immediately go no that's not going to be possible even before I understood that that's not what they want either because if you have a large-scale project as you were saying some companies or some like uh, customers they're not gonna be open to you refactoring the whole thing because they don't care about either the system or indulging your need to make things pretty they just want a cheap solution or things like that but there's two types of refactors it's this they you have the refactor that is for everyone which is the one you're talking about where you just going you're just gonna fix all quote unquote all the things and that's usually not the way to go and then there is the one that you do for yourself and those two types of refactors are very different because the one that you, where you, what you were talking about is the refactor you, that most people tell other like stakeholders about to fix all the things, and that's usually the one that gets shut down. But then there's the refactor you do for yourself, and that's the one you should always do because you don't have to tell anybody about it. And when you f hit a spe uh, specifically or like a particularly bad piece of code. If you cannot effectively, effectively work on that thing, the refactor is not for anybody besides yourself. And that's what I suggest that you do. It's what I do. If I find code that is so badly written that I'm actually afraid to change this because I don't know if it's going to work or not, then I add unit tests. So I refactor enough of the code so that I can actually work with it. That's not something you even have to tell your stakeholder about because it's non-optional, because it's the same thing as if you had to go and look something up on Stack Overflow. It's a prerequisite for you to do the thing that they want you to do. You're not refactoring things just for the sake of refactoring. You're actually fixing something that is so bad that you cannot do the job they want you to do if you don't do it. And that's a big difference. It's a big, big, big difference. And I can promise you that the scope creep that you're going to see on that sort of thing is 
it's nothing because it's as I said it's that or then you're not going to be able to solve the problem or there's going to be a bunch of bugs or something like that and as I like to remind people guys you cannot be held responsible for the state of the code when you take it over you can only do as best as you can so what I want you to take away from this is that number one understand that imposter syndrome is just nerves, inexperience, fear, these sorts of things. And the best way to kill fear is with practice. Practice, practice, practice. Put yourself out there, do the thing that is scary or the closest thing to that thing until you can do the thing, until you don't even think about it anymore. That's how you do it. Exposure is everything when you want to deal with fear because uh, experience and familiarity with things is the, uh, it's the best medicine against that which is unknown and, and uh, that feels uh, intimidating. Uh, and as for refactors, remember guys, you have to understand how to talk to a stakeholder. A stakeholder or a non-technical person or someone like that, they when they hear refactor, they hear extra work or things that you will do that is sort of you know, going to make things nicer and it's more about you than it is about whatever they want, right? And that's the sort of thing you usually have to tell them about because it's frankly going to scope increase the thing that you're doing so if you tell people about that you're inviting the opportunity for them to have an opinion about your work but that's the one type of refactor that is good for everybody then you have the other one which is just for you where you literally are in a position where unless you fix that like I've done this a hundred times guys I've worked on code where I mean I do it these days where the code is so badly written that I can't even guarantee that it's gonna work I don't even know if it works right now it might be bugged and like I have a problem at its current state. I didn't cause it, but now I'm going to touch it again, so it's up for review again. So if all those issues come back, guess who's going to have to fix it? So what you do is that you fix the piece that you are working on. So in a sea of legacy, you fix one piece just enough so that you can safely change that code. That refactor is for nobody else. It is for you, and it's a request, a prerequisite for you to do your job. And there's nothing weird about that. You don't even tell people about that because they should. That's not none of their business. It's just as little of their business as if you're using Stack Overflow. It's something you do to get the job done. Have a great day.